So now that we've um, introduced our uh, the idea of looping, right? Uh, and we understand what looping is. Looping is going back and doing the same instruction X number of times, right? Uh, we're gonna learn something new today called jumps and loops, okay? This is uh, a pretty simple concept. Uh, there are two main instructions that we will, we're gonna be using for, for our loops. One of them is the JMP or the jump uh, instruction and the LOOP or loop instruction, all right? So this one has a very simple syntax. Uh, your jump, we call this one the JMP, we call this an unconditional jump. That means it'll jump as, as soon as it finds the keyword JMP, it'll jump to wherever you tell it to go to, all right? Um, the syntax is that you need to include the JMP and you must have a target. In other words, a location to go to. And that target is going to be a label. So here in this pseudocode, notice that we're using a label called top, all right? So you can be writing all your instructions. You could say move and add and subtract and increment and you know move to the next array item, whatever. And then once you get to this instruction, JMP top, it'll go back to top and it'll start all the instructions again so very simple jumping now because it's very simple it's also kind of dangerous because notice that uh here well at least in this particular example there is no way for you to modify your code to change what happens here this one just jumps it's kind of like uh, uh, you know it, it doesn't matter you you did this you 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 went to go ahead and 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 wash the dishes pick up the toys do your homework now jump to the beginning again so you go back to the beginning and you have to wash the dishes again uh, pick up the toys and do the homework and then you get back to jump to the beginning again and you keep doing that over and over and over and this gives you an infinite loop all right so we reserve the JMP instruction for conditional jumping. Again, JMP by itself is unconditional. Unconditional meaning it doesn't have a condition, like an if else, all right? So we wanna use the JMP with conditions, such as do, you know, do the dishes, do the toys, you know, do the homework, and then you have a condition if, um, you know, homework has been completed. If true, jump to next, or if false, jump back to the top, that kind of thing, all right? Uh, we'll look specifically at conditional statements in the following chapter, okay? Uh, before that, we go to the next instruction, which is our uh, loop instruction, okay? So now we, we see what the jump does. Uh, you can use it without conditions, but you have to be kind of, you know, kind of careful. Uh, but the other one, and this is the one that I want to concentrate on right now, is called the loop instruction. And the loop instruction is just like the jump. Notice that this one tells you loop to a particular target. So you could say loop to top, right? And this one has its own condition because it uses by default a counter and the counter is PCX, right? So the, before you start into a loop, you, all you have to do is set the counter to a particular number. And then by default, when you get to the loop instruction, loop will decrement ECX by one. Notice that ECX is ECX minus one, all right? So pretty much what this is doing is that the loop will continue while my ECX is not zero okay so uh how is it done internally well oops the assembler internally calculates the distance between the address where the first instruction is found to the address where the last instruction where the where the loop is and then it subtracts and it saves that offset the relative what we call a relative offset 
so that I can go back to the top and continue doing this. Okay. So, all right. Um, relative offsets are always added to the um, segment IP. So your to your IP register. All right. But let's look at an example of the loop. So um, this one shows us both what's happening in your code and what's happening internally. So let's concentrate on the source code. Here, let's look at this. So notice that here we're moving zero into AX. So we're initializing our AX register and then we're adding, uh, or actually we're storing the value five into the ECX. ECX is by default the counter used by the instruction loop. Then we have a label. This is called L1. Um, ideally, your label should be a little bit more specific. So call it top or you know beginning loop or whatever, right? Um, and the very first instruction within this label is add whatever is in CX into AX. So it's going to add the lower bit, which this happens to be a small enough number. So it adds that into AX. All right, so we put that in there. All right, so we put the five into AX, right? So it's five plus zero is five. Then notice that this one loops back to L1, so it'll go back to L1. Now, immediately, as soon as we hit the loop, the ECX gets decremented to four. So now it says add five plus four. Loop, so ECX is three. So it's nine plus three, so it's 12. The loop now gets decremented to two. So 12 plus two is 14. The loop gets decremented to one. Then it's 14 plus one is 15. The loop is decremented to zero. That, that you know, once we reach zero, automatically your loop comes, you know, gets out. So it continues to whatever line of code is after loop L1 and it'll just, finish your program that way. This is just FYI, the largest possible backward jump is negative 128, and the largest possible forward jump is positive 127. It aligns with that byte uh, that we have. Um, so really quickly, on um, the very first one, what would be the value of AX, right, in this one? Uh, I'll let you figure that one out a little bit later, all right? Because once I upload this video, all right, I'll, I'll put a little a question there. Uh, but it's pretty simple. Just remember that automatically ECX is stored for, and every time that it hits the loop, it decrements by one, okay? And it goes back to L1. And it doesn't stop until uh, you go to uh, zero, okay? Same thing for the next one, okay? So if we need to, at any point, use nested loops, we can. We just have to be careful because remember that loop instruction by default uses ECX. So it's not like in C++ where we can say, well, I have counter one and counter two. Here, ECX is the same ECX used for every single loop that you use in your program. So there are ways around it. Notice how this is done. So here we have, uh, we're starting with our first counter. We're adding 100. So that means this loop will run 100 times, okay? And we start with our label one and we move ECX into count. We declare another, we declare another uh, variable named count uh, and we're gonna add that 100 into count. Then, before we jump into the inner loop, we are adding 20 into ECX. Uh, this is not version one of ECX and version two of ECX. No, it is the same ECX. So that means that that 100 is now lost. All right, that's why we made sure we saved it before we, we went into this second instruction. So now ECX no longer has 100, ECX now has the value of 20. Now we go into the body of L2. So this one, notice that this one loops back to L2. So this one, something is happening there and it'll do it 20 times. 20, 19, 18, 17, da 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 da, da. 
three, two, one. Once it goes one, then it goes zero. Once it's at zero, it gets out of L2 loop. And it now notice what we're doing here. Now we go back to count, which had the number 100. And it, add, and it places the 100 back into ECX. And now we go into loop one. Uh, and loop L1 will go from 100 to 99. And uh, that will then go back up, oops, go back up to L1. Now ECX has 99 and it'll place it into count. Then we reassign 20 and 20, 19, 18, so on and so forth. So this is happening, you know, a hundred times. So the outer loop will eventually get to zero. Uh, obviously the inner loop will, you know, do this a lot more times. It'll, so the inner loop will run 2000 times and the outer loop only a hundred.